And welcome back to On the Record. In studio, Sterling Deer and Wayne Rice of the Mohawk Bridge Consortium. So we have, um, you know, some of the issues surrounding that and the contract went to you, but, you know, what, what, what is the main problem right now? I know that the union is saying one thing because it's not a union job, but it, it appears that, you know, even months ago, some of the workers were having some concerns. And was there anything that was just blown out of proportion or? I think back in August, I believe, uh, Jacques Dubois sent some letters out to certain men on our, our project that they were basically be uh, brought up on charges if they stayed working on the bridge project, uh, which resulted in nine men leaving the job, actually quitting, you know, quitting, taking all their tools, and then they left the job. And that, that was the start of the snowball effect uh, on the whole project. Before, uh, before that happened, though, was there anything like saying that it was building up to that, or what, what was the union doing? I I don't I don't think they were doing anything at least anything I could see unless they were behind the scenes. So obviously, to, to, for them to make a, a decision like that, there had to have been somebody, I don't know who, mm -hmm. from our community or from the union itself or or elsewhere, making a complaint to them, why they would send those letters out because there've been, you know, if you look at some of the work in the past, uh, the deck has been changed prior the. The expansion joints were done, and, and there was a lot of iron workers on there at that time, and the unions never taken that position. Um, why now? I don't have. A, I, I can't really answer that. You know, I, I know the council and the uh, were talking to them, and they were trying to defuse the situation as best as possible, and you know, they did their best. Uh, but the union's very persistent, and I think at one time the council was totally fed up with them and, you know, they were negotiating in bad faith. And then that's when Mr. Dubois sent the letters when he saw no more light at the end of the tunnel, which didn't make our chiefs happy. It's unfortunate, but that's what happened. So since they, they sent a letter to the nine individuals and they obviously they left the job, um, how, did, how was that affecting the work itself or did it? Well... It didn't affect the work at all. When, when, uh, I'm on the job more, and, and uh, I deal with the men all the time, and I, I hear them, and I'm around them. And when the letters got sent, there was, you know, things were starting to um, to move around on the job site, and, and, and the men were starting to um, act differently, not only towards one another, but towards the whole issue. We had uh, some discussions on it. They had their own discussions on it without our presence, and you know it always came down to uh, basically that we respect the union. I'm a union man, and I have to accept that. Mm -hmm. But I have to also accept that this is gonna walk, and you know we're different people. And through all the discussions, it always came back to that. Well, that's where that's where it came to. Sterling, I think it's important to 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 mention that the men voted on, on the job four times they voted that they do not want the involvement of the CCQ and or the union. Four times the, the, the men that were there voted on it. And each time they voted, Sterling, myself, Pete Morris, or any one of the owners, we left the site uh, so we wouldn't influence anything they have to say. We can't say they were being pressured. Mm -hmm. you know, they would ask me some opinion. I would say, no, I don't want to give an opinion or Sterling. You guys make the decision. Come on, Sterling, Pete Morris, we're leaving. And they made a decision four times. They don't want the involvement of the union and or the CCQ. Some of the, um, I'm, I was going through some of the paperwork, some from the Moa Council, some from the, um, the meeting that, that you had. I, I looked at the tape of the press conference that um, the, the union had um, with, um, was it Jacques Dubois, Pierre de Roche? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, because of the size of the job or the money involved in it, it seems like that that's one of the issues. They're not saying it, but if you if you look at the momentum they're trying to do and, and, and how they're maneuvering what they're doing is it seems like that's the case. 
But more importantly, they're, they're, they're making accusations. And, and in, if you looked at the press conference, it seemed a, a kind of ridiculous because they never really answered any of the questions. Everything that they were making, all the accusations, were all unsubstantiated. They weren't even saying that they were allegedly doing this. They said, this is being done, this is being done, this is being done. All these things that are being done, but we can't prove them. Yeah. So they looked, they looked ridiculous talking about rumor. I mean, people in those positions, one a president, the other one a business agent for 7-Eleven uh, Union, to come out and, and then not have anything concrete other than, well, we think it's happening. You know, I think even in the outside media, it... It put a bad light on the union or those individuals anyway for not having information that was at least substantiated because they were just throwing everything out. So I think that it looked like more that they were just trying to discredit the job than anything else. But they did have some points um, that I was looking at in there. And some of the things that they were saying, well, they were saying that there was no insurance, which MSI has is, is been there. I mean, they're saying that that uh, CSST and CCQ has jurisdiction in Ganawage. And they haven't had jurisdiction in Ganawage for 20 some odd years. So on paper, yes, they do. <coughs> they have jurisdiction in the whole province of Quebec. But they were, they were looking at, they were talking about some of the, like using scare tactics on the bridge for in regards to safety. And then that I didn't understand. Yeah, I can, uh, not only safety, they went as far as environment. Yeah, they, they were Mr. saying that there was contamination Mr. in the water and the yeah. land of the lead. Mr. Dubois does not realize when he makes a statement that we are contaminating and throwing lead into the water, he needs to get his story straight because we didn't do any work out in the river yet. We just put our platforms out there. So mm -hmm. if, if we put the platforms out there, made lead fall in the water, then we have a problem. We didn't do any work out there, Mike. Mm -hmm. You know, he's talking about safety of the job. He's talking about the bolts weren't loose on the gusset plates. It was not the case. The, 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 uh, the uh, project manager was not dismiss, dismissed because the bolts were loose. It was uh, totally the opposite. They were a little bit too tight. Not a lot tight, just a little bit too tight. But Mr. Dubois has his t facts totally wrong. But I mean, those things are, I mean, I've done iron work for years and, and mm -hmm. That happens. Yeah. I mean, it's no fault of anyway. If it happens, it happens. That's why you have engineers on a job. That's why you have, there's a lot of checks and balances. So even though there's one something like that, it's, it, I don't think it compromised the safety of the bridge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't uh, hear of any, of any parts of the bridge coming down. No. But, um, you know, I think the lead issue and the paint issue, we have our own environment office. I don't know if, if they were involved in, in that or if there was any tests or, I mean, you know, that, that's a, it's a valid thing, but I think that he was just throwing everything into the pot to question everything that was going on there. I think that some of the concerns that he had also was in regards to um, the bidding process and there wasn't a $50, 50 million dollar bond put up, I guess, which generally done on a job that big is that is, I don't know what that means. I'm just question asking about that. Okay, I'll, I'll explain that. When the, on a job or a project like this, when you go through a regular government bidding tendering process, mm -hmm. there's a 50% there's a labor bond, 50% uh, material bond. And I think that's what he's talking about. On this specific project, we negotiated uh, with the government in, in good faith, and we were quite happy that the government says they're going to waive all those, all those, um, bonding issues for the MBC and uh, letters of credits and that. And it was tough negotiating. Otherwise, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to do the job because you know yourself, to, to get bonded a, a Mohawk or a native company is very difficult. And yeah. it w we would have been next to impossible. But that's why it took two years to negotiate it. Our, our bond, if you want to say, the partners put some money into a bank account and promised the, uh, the JCCBI that we will not pull the money out and use it as seed money. And it was not, uh, it wasn't 50,000, it was, it was a substantial amount yeah, yeah. of the five partners. Okay. And that's how that ended up for, uh, and we appreciate they did it for us because yeah, if yeah, not, yeah, we yeah. wouldn't have had the job. 